marry you, Ruby. Let's go. Thank you for joining us for another Candid Conversation. My name is Muriel. And my name is Ruby. Just because you see a smile does not mean everything is perfect. We all have a story. On the show, we discuss topics that are unspoken and taboo in our community. We are blessed to be filming tonight at Brinson Studios, where we are excited to have a conversation with Ada Madison. We will be discussing her life as an author, artist, her past, and her present life. Ada, we want to welcome you to the show. Welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you. We always lead the show with asking the guests to tell us a little bit about their childhood because we believe our childhood shapes who we become as an adult. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I grew up in Iowa. Um, Iowa. Heart of the Midwest, yeah. Um, actually, not on a farm. Never really, <laughs> spe- never really spent any time on a farm, but in a, in a city in Iowa. Um, Parents were married, and it was kind of a kind of a normal sort of Norman Rockwell-looking childhood on the outside. Okay. Um, on the inside, there was quite a bit of, of turmoil mm-hmm. and whatnot. Um, I lost a, a baby brother when he was real young, and yeah, was it was it was hard. Yeah. And I kind of um, he he got German measles actually mm-hmm. from me sneaking off mm-hmm. to play with a friend that had them. So I always had this like feeling of responsibility, I guess, yeah. for that. So yes. that kind of made yeah. this weird mm-hmm. hiccup in my childhood. But it was a little um, turbulent. Yeah. Um, I started running away when I was maybe 12, 13, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I ran away for the last time when I was 16 and just stayed on my own. So I've got kind of a interesting start, yeah, where... So what happened what? With, the running, mm-hmm. with the running away? What do you think? Um, as far as why would you why were you leaving the house? Why was I rebellious? leaving the house? Um, in my teenage mind, I felt very unloved. I was looking for someone to love me. Okay. Um, and I wasn't. I, that's it. You that's just in a nutshell. Yeah, I wanted to feel. I, I in my mind, I wanted them to chase after me. Right. I wanted them to say, "No, Stop. come home," yeah, right. you know, but. They did it. They did. <laughs> yeah, no. So, um, yeah, so I had started as in the adult world, you know, mm-hmm. in my career and that kind of thing, very, very young. So that had to be difficult. I was so determined to prove that I was something, mm-hmm. I think, sure. um, that I just pushed through. Mm-hmm. I didn't think it was hard. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I look back on it now and think, like, Man, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So I started really young. So did you ever contact your parents? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and we became extremely close. Aww. Extremely close. My mother, by about the time I was maybe 30, was really, I would say, my best friend in the world. Um, and we remained really, really close. She listened but, at that point. I mean, along yeah, the way, as you Yeah, we she all did. How you felt and we worked through a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. So you went to college there, or did you? I, I went to cosmetology college in Iowa. Okay. Fellow, my female. Yeah. Fellow, <laughs> yeah. Hair scientist, right? Yes, that's what it is. I, I remember hearing that when I, when I went to school, my family was a, a dead set against me going to cosmetology school. I heard things like, you know, you're too smart for that. You should go to real school or whatever. But you know, that kind of drove me to be more. You know, to okay. really push in my, my right. cosmetology mm-hmm. career. But to answer your question, yes, I went in Iowa and I had the opportunity to work for what was kind of the cool salon in the city okay. at the time. It was the place to work, but I had no idea the real global footprint that this woman had in, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, she was the guns behind starting Paul Mitchell. Oh, um, okay. She um, actually sponsored Horst from Aveda to mm-hmm. bring him to the United States before he even came well. here. 
So yeah, she mentored me and like got me into the competition circuit and all those things at a wow, super, wonderful. super young age. So yeah. Well, she's a mentor. That's very, yeah. very good. And then after college, you graduated, you started working in... Graduated and, and worked with, her name was Peg Gaudian in Cedar Rapids, Iowa okay. for just a couple of years, enough to like do the competition circuit, that kind of thing, was mm-hmm. involved in the national circuit. Okay. And then I came to Naples, Florida on vacation, actually. Mm-hmm. And I saw white sand and blue water (laughs) for the first time in my life. I was like, oh, my God. All right. So I, on vacation, went and experienced the, you know, the blue water and the white sand Uh and decided that I wanted to live there. (laughs) And the truth is, you'll appreciate this. I sort of looked around and thought, there is no good hair in the city. (laughs) And with all my youthful arrogance, I'm like, I'm going to do this. And so I did. Um, I went back home and I sold everything I had and packed up a movie and I moved across the country and it's a beautiful Naples Florida I did yeah yeah beautiful. and within I don't know just uh, just year maybe I had I opened up actually it was less than that mm-hmm. opened up my first salon wow. and it grew and grew and grew and yeah we were the we were the Aveda force to be reckoned with I All guess right. you could say in Naples, Naples. for decades mm-hmm. well, that's um, wonderful. yeah so you're very driven mm-hmm yeah, you did it all by yourself mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's just, um, it was that inner push to kind of do something. I guess. Do something. Uh, yeah. Even though your parents didn't want you to exactly because they thought you were better than that. Right. That's I think that better. was what pushed yeah, me right. to, right. yeah. And you did it. I don't mm-hmm. know how they felt seeing your daughter open up a salon. By the time we were really you know, we had expanded. Mm-hmm. It was large. It was wow. in a wonderful oh location. Gosh. It was, yeah, very well respected mm-hmm. salon in the city. I said, I talked to them about it, and they're like, we never said anything. Uh, yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> you. It, was the, it was sort of the wind mm-hmm. under my sails that yes. really propelled me, though. So, oh, that's yeah, awesome. That was awesome. And you that's did wonderful. that for how many years? You're still doing it I was it in today? Naples for over 20 mm-hmm. years, oh, and then I decided I wanted my son out of Naples, okay. and the, it's extremely opulent. Okay. Extremely yes. opulent in okay. Naples. Okay. Yeah, there's like, um, it's normal to see luxury cars in the high school parking lot. Or yes, whatever that's that, true. And it's right kids, right? Mm-hmm. right? So I, I wanted him to have more of a normal environment. Sure. Mm-hmm. And my family had moved from Iowa to Wisconsin during all those years I was okay. in Naples. Okay. okay. So, and to Milwaukee, suburb of Milwaukee. So I decided that we were going to move to Milwaukee. Okay. And I was going to keep both, Naples and, and Milwaukee. I was going to open another one up there. Wow. Okay. And it became... Milwaukee was large. It mm-hmm. wound up being a real large with an art gallery incorporated oh. with it. Oh, full my. spa. That's um, nice. It was three three floors of. Oh my gosh! It sounds so beautiful. It I was, can see it now. It was yeah. a dream come true. Mm-hmm. I, it was really really fun to do. But I sold Naples oh. and, and focused then just Milwaukee. strictly on on Milwaukee. Okay. And how did that? It that was attention. wonderful. It was, yeah, I loved it. We, and at that point in time, I was a single mom okay. raising my son. Mm-hmm. And it was this very chic, artsy suburb mm-hmm. of Milwaukee called Cedarburg. That's kind Cedarburg. of like, it, it's, it's historic. Okay. So the buildings were all historic. My salon was in a building that was built in 1869. Oh my. I bet it was beautiful. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. So it had that kind of vibe to it, you know, the okay. juxtaposition of I can see it now. modern and old, whatever. Mm-hmm. But yes, it was wonderful. Life was good. <laughs> Life was good. <laughs> Life was good. Yeah. <laughs> and then how long and what happened from there from that there. brought you here? That You're bro- here. You're in Florida. Exactly. From Milwaukee. Yeah. How did I get beautiful- there and back again? Right. So I um, was at a point that I was kind of on coast with my salon like okay. it, it was well running machine on its own okay and i had more time to delve into the arts and focus on that other part of my mm-hmm. life creativity exactly yes um, instead of it being just a weekend thing i could get more involved okay. or whatnot okay. and actually i i met someone mm-hmm. that became my husband okay at an art opening um okay i when i say i met him he sent this big extravagant 
bouquet of flowers and I had lost my mother. I didn't mm. say that part. Mom got okay. it, had cancer yeah. and Sorry, we went it. through, yeah, it was a, it was a tough chapter. Mm -hmm. okay, that's for sure. Okay. But I'm glad, I really believe that's part of the reason I went to Milwaukee. To um, spend that time. Yeah. I think I needed to be there. Absolutely. Yes. You know, the diagnosis happened after mm -hmm. I got there okay. and I'm grateful mm -hmm. to have been there yes. and walk through that with her. Yes. Um, but yeah, so this big extravagant artsy bouquet came mm -hmm. and to make a long story short, mm -hmm. the person who sent that, um, began aggressively, I can say now at this mm -hmm. point, courting me or mm -hmm. pursuing me okay. or whatever. You were um, shocked and surprised. I was. <laughs> yeah, I was. This is wonderful. You it came, was wonderful. He came into your life at a time that you really needed him the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. He I did. Know. It was a, um, I can look back now and know how vulnerable I was mm -hmm. at that yes. point in my life. Yes. Um, he was not someone that I would have said in my own world was like my type. Right, right, right. Okay. Yes, I, I, I understand. And I thought, oh, you're being really superficial or yeah, whatever. Like, stop you know? it. Stop it. Why are you being that way? You know? Yeah. And so I just sort of went with it. Mm -hmm. And he was the consummate gentleman, mm -hmm. um, treated me. Like in a, a way that, mm -hmm. uh, like a queen. Yes. I've never been treated um, as well as, yeah. as he treated me. Yes. Oh, wow. so, yeah. I, Everybody's I looking know. for that. Look, I know it. <laughs> I've been there too. Yeah. We can share that Let's story. Share the same yeah. story. It all looks good. You know that saying, all that glitters is not gold. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Man, it looks good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> uh huh. So, how did that turn out? He wound up proposing to me awesome. okay. about, yeah, about a year into, mm -hmm. not even a year, it was probably six months into our, mm -hmm. our dating. And mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. yeah, very romantic in the way he did it. Yes. And, mm -hmm. um, oh yes, <laughs> been there, done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I agreed to marry him, but told that, told him that I wanted to wait until my son was you know, okay. into college and, and whatnot okay. right at that point of our lives. And we wound up marrying much sooner than, than, okay. yeah. He, he just persuaded you and, and said, let's just yeah, do sometimes it. Sometimes you got to watch just... that push. Sometimes yeah, that push is oh, a red my, flag. My... But you loved him. Yes, you I were did. in love with him I and did. you wanted to. He treated her right. He treated her right. He treated my son incredibly. Mm. Like it was his own. He, he mm. was doting and caring to my father. See. He, um, was everything that I never even imagined right. could be. Mm -hmm. Everything you never knew you needed. Exactly. There's a song. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no kidding. That would be, yeah. Mm -hmm. But. But, yeah. But. but about two years, a little mm -hmm. less than two years into what would be a pretty petrol perfect marriage, mm -hmm. I've just really kind of accidentally and inadvertently found paperwork that was actually plans to take my life. What? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So we were, you know. You were supposed to find that. Yes, I was supposed to find that. And I should, um, you know, back up and share with mm -hmm. you that during that first two years mm -hmm. of marriage, I heard things that were, I can look back at it now and it feels very condescending or whatever, but at the time, mm -hmm. it felt like love to okay. me. Yes, yeah. I know. I it understand. felt like love. When he said things like, you are so cute with your business. You mm -hmm. work so hard. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that, babe. Let, let mm -hmm. me take care of you. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. And I thought, oh. And so he kind of moved in with his accountants and just, just let me handle this. I'll just give it to my right? lawyers and see how nice that was. It was so nice and smooth. smooth. This man loves me. He loves mm -hmm. my family. He's great with my father. He exactly. treats me like a queen. I'm good. I trust him. Yeah, exactly. With everything. With everything. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, this, this happens that I literally like come home and, and, and find this paperwork. Um, so I'm literally holding it in my hands and he walked into the house oh. and saw me with it, you oh know, my. and, and truly the, the paperwork, when I say it was plans to take my life, mm -hmm. what I saw at that moment in time, what mm -hmm. I was looking at mm -hmm. was I had purchased a new car okay. at the time and I, didn't even know that there was a loan on the car. I purchased the car. Mm -hmm. Okay. This was after the sale of my business. You know, relax. Let me care for you. We sell my business, mm -hmm. a business. It was the second mm -hmm. business I had sold. Mm -hmm. So it's like selling a house. There's right. lawyers and there's That's tons it. of papers. Mm -hmm. um, right. You're signing. It was a cash sale. I wasn't holding any paper or anything. Oh, it was like, goodness. it should have been just a right. really sweetheart deal. Um, but 
it wasn't exactly what it appeared to me. Oh, so Lord. I'm looking at this paperwork, and what it was was paperwork saying that your car was repossessed due to non-payment. Oh, my goodness. It went to public auction and was sold. And there was a, I don't remember the number right now, several, I don't remember, five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000, something like that, deficiency between what they sold it for right, and what remaining. the loan, okay? Mm -hmm. And so there was court costs and whatnot, plus this deficiency filed against me and a warrant for my arrest. What? Stop because it. I had never shown up for any of the court, court proceedings. Because you never got anything. No. Oh, my gosh. And the, the envelope, what caught my attention first was it had... A, a P.O. box, my name in a P.O. box, mm -hmm. and I've never had a P.O. box mm. in my life. And I thought, and it was open, you know, so I, I really, right. I was happy and oblivious. Right, like, right. What is this? What's going you know? on? And so I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to comprehend, and I'm rifling through these papers. And he and, walks in. And he walks in. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Like, what are you doing? He, what? it. It was, you know how people say that they, you can watch a person change, you can see mm -hmm. darkness or mm -hmm. evil yes. come into a yes. person's, okay, those eyes just mm. like change. And you didn't recognize him no. at that point. It was a totally different person. Right. You yeah, didn't recognize maybe him. Maybe I really saw the real him, you know, oh at, at that point, but yes. it erupted in some serious violence, oh uh, very gosh. serious violence, and I was effectively oh kept hostage in my own home oh my um, for about 48 hours, oh and he goodness. was drinking, 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 and he finally was like passed out asleep. And you ran. And I ran. Yes. I literally ran. ran. for your life. Mm-hmm. I had twenty dollars cash. Oh my goodness! And my cards, just like the normal stuff. I had mm -hmm. never had a lot of cash in my wallet mm -hmm. or whatever. But I'd go to like use a card in the couple of days or hours to come or whatever. Mm -hmm. Everything was shut down immediately. He had shut everything down, taken mm -hmm. my name off. Because he had control over everything. Everything. Oh my goodness! So the, oh my the goodness. twenty I left with is what I had in my name, and it took me months to really realize that's what had happened, but. Because um, this had, is somebody that loved you, that mm -hmm. you trusted, that mm -hmm. just did everything and anything for you. Yeah. What did, did you do? When um, you walked out of that house or ran out of that house. You ran. I ran. Yeah. I literally ran. Mm -hmm. I had a rental car that I thought was from the dealership. I thought it was a loaner. Right. He had told me that it was, you know, whatever with mm -hmm. this. It wasn't. That it was. That it, do you remember when Toyota accelerators were sticking? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He said that it was a recall on that and he was demanding a new car for me. Mm. That he didn't want to have it repaired or whatever. So I thought I had a loaner from the dealership. Oh my and in actuality, it had been repossessed. Okay. Oh my so I took off in that loaner car and then I'm thinking, he could call the police. This is not even my car right. or, or whatever. And I'm making phone calls to whoever I know to call at that point mm -hmm. in time. And I wound up abandoning the car down by the lake. Mm -hmm. I would have left it to the Yeah. I would have done I just, the same. I thought this will be easy to, I, you know, yes. truly that part of my life is almost a blur to oh, remember man. that. Oh, my God. The dramatic. details mm -hmm. of it. Thank but, you for, for, you know, talking to us about yeah. it today. Yeah, but for sure. You just never, ever know, right? No, you don't. You know, you know, never, no, no. There's a lot of narcissists out here, and that's yes. what it sounds like. Controlling. Yeah, and he exactly. Just, mm -hmm. He knew it, what he was doing. He very much yeah. knew what he was doing, and he had done it before. I, I wasn't, oh, I sure. learned, you, you know, that there were others like yes. like myself, and he would, um, that's kind of where it started with the real domination mm -hmm. and control and the threats mm -hmm. of, you know, being in a public place and having my phone ring and have him say, I see you. And I'm in Minneapolis. Oh I'm gosh. not in Milwaukee. Or being oh, in wow. Iowa and saying, I see you walking into that high How scary is that? Grocery story. Oh, it was terrifying. I would have been scared. Well, he had a good. tracker, you think, on your phone or did he really see you? I think it was a little of both. Okay, okay. And I was not even aware of GPSs and how that worked. Right, right, it, with right, that, right. We're going back a few years. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know that that existed. Right. Um, so it was, yeah, it was a scary time. <gasps> so I'm just glad that you made it out. Oh, I am too. I'm glad that you're sitting here. Yes. In right. front of us. Yeah. And you made it. Yes. But I know there was a struggle. Mm -hmm. There had to have been a struggle for you, yes. to, for you to be sitting here right. today with $20 in your pocket. Mm -hmm. You walked out that house with $20. Right. How did you survive? Mm -hmm. Well, I look back on it now and I know that, you know, really the only reason I did survive is, is the Lord. That's the it. Lord. That's, That's it. number one. Yes. Yes. Totally. Yes. Walk me through it. Yes. I was, I was homeless for a little over two years mm. and I didn't have a car now. I don't even have a car. So. It's your feet. It was, yeah. 
I never had to sleep on the street. Okay. I was never on a park bench. Okay. I never had to suffer like, okay. you know, I have such incredible compassion in my heart right yes. now. I can't mm -hmm. go past yes. many people on the street without course, stopping. No. Mm -hmm. you know? I understand. Yes. By the grace of God, that would have been me. I exactly. had couches or yes. somebody's basement or whatever. Right. Go for friends. I could never stay long. Right. Because no. that fear that was with me would soon take over the house. Yeah, he's going to find me. Well, yeah, and I saw that fear that I carried mm. now on my friends or yes, whatever, when okay. they were fearful. My father sleeping with a gun. Oh, you know, gosh. Like, yeah. That kind of thing. Trying to so, protect you, wanting to protect you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. was anything, did anything ever happen to him? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we wound up. I have a... Um, I have an international meaning it exceeds the borders of the United States, mm -hmm. okay. border of protection. Good. A new name, a new birth certificate, Good. a new really? social security number, like a complete new start. Good. And, you know, part of that chapter that mm -hmm. I like to, to share is one of the most common questions I'm asked mm -hmm. is, is he in jail? Mm -hmm. How long did he go to jail? Mm -hmm. How long did he whatever? Mm -hmm. And it's a... Um, it's, it's a passion of mine to see some of that change out mm -hmm. there. Yes, me um, too. <laughs> me too. Yeah. By the, you know, it, it was truly a blessing to have the judge that I had. I had, I had been running in about a three or four state area for two years. Oh, my and goodness. It, the heat get turned up and I'd have to run again or whatever. But I was in Minneapolis at oh, that goodness. time. And the police station mm -hmm. said, you have to do this. You have to go down and get this restraining order mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or whatever. Yes. And I had been avoiding it. Every police station, every woman's shelter, thinking, what is that piece of paper going to do right. or whatever, right? Right. Um, but I went ahead and you kind of it. was forced to go down. Good. I'm glad so, you did. Too. Right? Yes. So I have this court-assigned guardian with me that said, just hold my hand. I'm going to be right next to you. Don't look at him. Look straight at the oh judge. Gosh. That's right. We'll get through this. Mm -hmm. And they, they issued right there at that point the maximum um, federal order that they Good. could. So Good. I didn't have to go through all the steps, which is wonderful. Yes. But mm -hmm. that judge called me back to her chambers afterwards mm -hmm. as a female. Okay. And they, you know, of course, held him. And she said, you know, the evidence that you have... And, you know, I had police reports that were like, you know, mm -hmm. this high and emails printed and, wow. you know, all the stuff right. that I needed. She said, he's absolutely going to be found guilty. But she said, I don't think what you understand is you don't go after him. We're going after him. Right. Yes. What he did is a crime. Did yes. you not want to do it? You didn't want? I just I wanted away from him. Okay. You wanted, okay? That's yeah. it. She said, what you need to think about is do you want to have a new start mm -hmm. and freedom mm -hmm. or do you want to see him go to jail? Because mm -hmm. the two don't come together. I want to and I just looked at her, you know, like, what do you, yeah. what do you mean? And she said, if this goes to court mm -hmm. and it will go to court, mm -hmm. unless you refuse to testify, mm -hmm. it will go to court. She said, it's going to take a minimum of two years mm -hmm. and he could probably drag it out a little longer than that if he'd like to. She said, it's a white collar crime. It mm. didn't kill you. Oh, if he gosh. killed you, it would be a different story. Right. If you lost you. a limb, it would be a different Come story. On. But you got all four limbs mm -hmm. and you're breathing. Yes. So the maximum he's going to actually serve mm -hmm. will be less than a year. He could be sentenced to five, six, awful? seven, whatever, but he'll never serve. It is awful. That's awful. She said, mm. how will you feel when he comes out of jail? Will you be more afraid? And I'm like, yeah. I was terrified. I'm right. thinking, yeah. I came here for comfort and mm -hmm. I came for help. a sense of, yeah, I wanted to be helped. Mm -hmm. Kind of forced into the situation, but still was hoping to find help. Right. And I was leaving feeling more fearful. That's but right. She was so compassionate and like, Came around the table, good, embraced nice. me, nice. hugged she's me. She's a woman. That, yeah. yeah, she that felt made me start to cry. Of course, and, right. and I believe she's probably walked through. I just think she, she has to have. She probably did. Yeah, she yeah. said, "I'm going to help you with paperwork today. Good. If you refuse to testify, we will hold him. Okay, he's not going to leave right away. You go. You start a new life. We'll start paperwork for a new name, the new birth certificate. So I'm, wow. I'm glad she did that. So I did, mm -hmm. and Good. so I, it wasn't a stand by your man, refuse to testify okay. that you see in some domestic. A lot of, mm -hmm. right? It was a really wonderful advice from a super compassionate judge yes. and. We need and more. So of you that. don't see that. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't we see definitely that. Definitely need more of that. Right. Yeah. So, as of today, though, do you feel fearful? Do you look over your shoulders? And I really don't. No. Oh, okay. I really okay. don't. Okay. And it's Good. funny because maybe it's probably been about three years ago or so. Mm -hmm. I started to realize that that was finally gone. 
Okay. okay. And I don't even know when that happened, but I would be like afraid to go out yeah. after dark with my dog mm-hmm. or if there was a loud noise at a store or something. Right. Right. You know, I would just like, it's, I right. had, was diagnosed with PTSD and no mm. doubt I had, you know, yeah. it was, yes, I definitely suffered with, trauma. you carry that yes. you know, when you go yeah. through a trauma yeah. like that, a but mm-hmm. it's really, no, it's okay, good. comfort. Yeah. I am real, I'm real comfortable now. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm assuming that you sought some type of therapy, some type of counseling, some type of... You know, something I didn't. No. Okay. No, I I didn't. didn't. It's so... And it's not because I'm against it. Yes. It's because I'm very much an advocate for it. Okay. It's because I was never any place long enough. Okay, I see. Okay. It was never any place... You know what I mean? It was just I would barely get in and they'd Mm -hmm. say, you need to talk to whatever. And I'd just be, you know, deer in headlights Headlights. in front of somebody Mm -hmm. and then I'd have to run again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I know. You know, yeah. There's something, I have to read this. Mm-hmm. I wrote this down because I wanted to make sure I got it out exactly the way you said it. Yeah. Exactly. The one thing you knew you had while going through all you've been through is God. Mm-hmm. I like your phrase. I know that God knows when, the where, the why, and the how. I show up and I do my part. He will do the rest. Mm. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. He will do the rest. Yes. And he has. He, he has. has guided you. Yeah. This whole yeah. time. Yes, he Look has. at this beautiful smile on your face. <laughs> yeah. He has. And he sees, yeah, the most profound blessings along yes. along the way. Yes. Yeah. You know, you said, how do, how do you support yourself? You know, there's no glam salons. <laughs> now it's kitchens. <laughs> That's right. And it's like, okay, I've got $18.70. I wonder how much hair color I can, you know, or whatever. <laughs> right. I can right. And I would make a little art out of you know, like maybe jewelry out of, out of stuff from Salvation Army, mm-hmm. or I learned that at the end of a garage sale, you can go grab like boxes of stuff yes. for nothing. So I was making something out of nothing and I would sell it in kitchens Aww. where I did hair. And if I ran away and I come back to that city, mm-hmm. that person would have 20 more lined up. And See? they'll say, you spend the weekend with this girl and I turn it. So I did you that mean? kind of thing, mm-hmm. but he blessed me and yes. blessed me and blessed Each me. Each and every time, more and more and more and more. Protection, financial. Yes. You're blessed. Yes. You're blessed. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. How did that impact your relationships? Did you get yourself involved in any more relationships? or I haven't. Okay. I, I have not. You know, it's crazy. I haven't even gone for a cup of coffee mm-hmm. oh. with a man. Yeah. But it's not, honestly, not it. I am not... Fearful okay. of it. Yes. And, and I'm, and I'm just, uh, I want to have, I want you that in my life. life. I'm, I'm not somebody who doesn't want to have someone in their life at all. Yes. And I have, you know, many, um, women will say, you know, you need to like get on match.com or something. Don't like, do yeah, it. No, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah. So if this, <laughs> If the Lord can like do, you know, believe me, right. I, don't yeah, do it. You know, no, I'm don't not do doing it. it. I am not doing it. I just yeah, believe like that it will, ha- it will happen. It'll it will happen. It will happen. If he can do all these other things for me, Come do on. I believe he's going to put that perfect yes. in it Yes. Yes. It's I do. not in your time. It's in his time. His time. That's right. Mm-hmm. Just keep and doing what you're doing. Exactly. You know, it's going to happen. He's preparing me. I believe that. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is. And I believe he's preparing him. And when the time is right. Yes. The time is right. That's yes. right. Yeah. But he, you know, he, I believe he gives us the desires of our heart, not yes. meaning he gives us anything we want, mm-hmm. but right. the desires we have in our heart, right. he's given to us. Yes. And I desire that. So mm-hmm. it's going to happen. It'll happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Oh my gosh. Just the time that we've met you, the short time that we've met you just to, just to see the type of person that you are. You're fun. You're loving. Oh, thanks. You know, you're easy, you know, going. Yeah. You're going to find the perfect person. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Well, I know yeah. so. Yes, yeah, that's there, right. There I you go. So. Claim it. <laughs> and then we'll yeah. go back to this show and say, remember <laughs> that time? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. In my life, I always try to find a way to relax and soothe myself. Mm-hmm. What do you do for peace, joy, and something just to relax? Art. Art. That's Art. right. Okay. I, I, I love to create um, Really, like if you guys walked into my place, she would just go. Most people just go. Did you? Because like, I just. I can't I, wait. I, just, I would love to see yeah, it. Yeah, cool for any time. But I do. I create on on everything, and I've gone through different tangents with art. And when I do, I kind of like turn into Rain Man a little bit. Oh. <laughs> okay. So if I'm on, and when you live alone, Amazon. and my son's grown, mm-hmm. I can do art yes. at one in the morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever. So yeah. 
That is great. I saw that. You've You've done done it on Mercedes interiors, purses. What else have you done? I I paint, I sculpt. Mm -hmm. My goodness. uh, Yeah, I've done clothes and jewelry and you know everything even your earrings right you're the ones yeah, yeah beautiful. beautiful yeah like the the earrings and all that stuff i mean i've always done kind of like bead stuff or whatever mm-hmm. but when i did the big leather and in naples that translated to very high-end um oh italian gosh, furniture expensive. leather furniture they hand paint it's gotten yes. better addresses than i'll ever have girl i've <laughs> <laughs> got furniture living in some beautiful places but so, but that led into tiny pieces of jewelry okay. or tiny pieces of leather that okay. I would do jewelry and whatnot out of. So really anything. Oh my, my most goodness. current tangent is digital, which is, it cracks me up because I always thought that a digital artist wasn't a, a real artist. Oh, yes. right. I thought you aren't real. That's all fake mm-hmm. or whatever. But it's real. Oh, no, it's really real. Mm. Yeah. My friend, um, we were talking earlier mm-hmm. about mutual acquaintances. We had, she is a children's yes. book author. Right. And okay. at the uh-huh. beginning of COVID, she contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in illustrating for one of her children's books. And I See? thought, yeah, something. Cause then it could be like whimsical, know, right? fun, kid <laughs> stuff, right? Right. But through that process of doing that, uh-huh. I figured out that I needed to be doing it digitally, not trying to right, literally yeah. make a painting mm-hmm. of every one of her illustrations was a painting, you know, that, that we would then photograph, whatever. So I, yeah, I got a walk nice. pad or whatever, and I can paint <laughs> Love it. at three in the morning, oh and I could, I could paint it any clothes I want, not get messy, and like, I love it. So that's my current. Uh-huh. Well, what aren't it. you doing? What aren't you doing? And then <laughs> I know, right? And then yeah, we have this. Yeah, we yeah. Have this suddenly, we have this suddenly. suddenly. Yeah. Now, tell, tell us suddenly. about. Tell us about, a little bit about. Suddenly has been um, a giant blessing in my life. I don't know how else to put it. Besides, when you say, "Did you ever have therapy?" That's that's it. it. That's it. That that was the biggest part mm-hmm. for me because um, it. <sighs> Everywhere I went, I kept hearing, you got to write this mm-hmm. because it's really crazy. The, mm-hmm. I know, it's we, a movie. We've touched the service. I, it's a movie. I believe it is a, a movie. movie. Yeah, I, yeah I, I think That's next. It, it is. I know. It's, I'm <laughs> That's positive next. it's coming. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. But I was in this car accident mm-hmm. that it was, I mean, I'm okay, I'm fine, but oh I was literally immobilized for almost four months where mm. again, this shoulder was messed up and this knee so I couldn't use crutches mm-hmm. and I could, it was it was nuts so I'm like stuck in this chair and I'm active person so to be I was it I gotta get out of here. Yeah. Oh, it made me crazy but <laughs> I got my laptop out and I started this it was like I was I was put down at that point and I started writing suddenly and suddenly documents from the time I was a little girl, mm. the things that I know affected the decisions mm-hmm. I made, how I made decisions, how I processed, how I imagined people were thinking about me when right. they, they were you know, the crazy little things yes. that go on, you know, between my ears mm-hmm. or between all of our ears. So yeah. it, it works, it documents from childhood all the way actually through the car accident mm-hmm. wow. Um, wow. And, and starting over again. So suddenly is my sudden both trauma in my life and many, many sudden blessings mm. and the miraculous, truly the miraculous that I've been able to firsthand experience yes. yeah. um, coming out of it. So yeah, that's... Experience and survive. Exactly. Yes. And we're here to tell your story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what's really the probably the biggest blessing? Mm-hmm. Suddenly was um, therapy going through all mm-hmm. of it, but since that's been published... I've heard from women on every continent. I'm literally. sure. I can only imagine. I'm sure. Through Facebook Messenger, mm-hmm. I'll have somebody from Turkey say, you know, I know, blah, 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 but this, my life is exactly the same, or mm-hmm. sometimes it doesn't look good to me. Right. Mm-hmm. But we all have yes. our suddenly moments. Yes. You yes. know, where there's a sudden yes. thing that, that makes you stop. rocks your world. Yes. Like yes. COVID. Yes. I mean, that, that, yeah. that was COVID suddenly. COVID rocked Definitely. the whole world, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So um, it's blessed me and it's walked me through healing and doing it yes. and mostly afterwards talking and being able to interact with all these women. others yeah. that have mm-hmm. been through so much trauma. It makes yes, my stuff look true. like child's play. Yeah. And you know? guess what? And it makes you 
it tells you and it shows you that you're not the only one. Mm -mm. That's when a right. lot of times you're going through it, you think, I'm the only one. Exactly. I don't want to talk about it. I'm the only one. Oh, I'm exactly. embarrassed. I, you know. Shame. That's yes. 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 You're not the only one. Mm -mm. Mm. Gosh. Yeah. That book should be a bestseller. If it's not, it should be. God willing, maybe it will be, right? <laughs> Pick it up suddenly. You can't buy this book. You need to hear this story. Purchase it for a friend. Absolutely. This story. Yes. And, and then you have, have some, some journals. Is that what this is? I do. Well, ab after I wrote Suddenly, I wrote, um, this one's called Beautifully Broken. Okay. okay. And Beautifully Broken is sort of an interactive journaling kind of thing. Okay. That um, it's people say, how did you go from being homeless a few years ago to being where I'm at right mm -hmm. now. And this is kind of it. It's how, it's how I walk through it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, it asks questions that I felt, mm -hmm. you know, not to sound all spooky or whatever, mm -hmm. but I felt the Lord asking me. It's, it's right. what, it's what I did yeah. internally I put in this. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Oh, yeah. Yes. The, the, um, Third adult book that I did, and this mm -hmm. one I just launched not long ago. This one's nice. called Beyond, Beyond the Veil. Veil. And this one is like, I'm super excited about it. It's, it's kind of like an art book because there's like, there's oh, art see, on, on one side of a page. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's paintings and that kind of thing. Okay. On the other side, it's journaling and there's scripture and questions mm -hmm. and whatever. Okay. So, um, okay, good. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize journaling is so, Healing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Here, here to here. Oh yeah. my goodness. Sometimes exactly. I wake up at one o'clock in the morning and paper. I'm writing. Exactly. Yeah. For me, it was my phone. For a long time, mm. I would speak notes into okay. my phone. Do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's how I go to when I wrote. Suddenly, I would tap back into my phone, my notes, and my mm -hmm. phone, or whatever. Sometimes you're you know? surprised at what you hear. Exactly. Like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're like, I made it through that. Yeah. So then, after Alva, um, after I did the book for my girlfriend, uh -huh. <laughs> I have a puppy. Her name is Annie. Look how oh, cute. Hi, Annie. <laughs> so I decided that I need to have my own children's books uh -huh. because I had so much fun Good. with her. So yeah, I launched this as Annie Bananny Goes to Giggle Pops. <laughs> Bananny. So cute. it's like, it's really Aww. whimsical fun, and you would love this because that it's her cute. going for her first haircut. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. So I've, there's cute. a whole, there's a whole children's series now. Oh, okay, that's good. awesome. Annie, and I've got three new ones coming out because I have a new, um, a new dog, but they're all central to my dog. And for mm -hmm. the people that live in the area, mm -hmm. all of the dogs and the people live basically in my community. Okay. Where I live. So dogs are healing too, you know. They yes, are. They are. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Congratulations on the book. Congratulations <laughs> on you. your life. Thank you. You know, we're going to. Thank you for sharing yeah, your story. story. Really mm -hmm. good to me. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, he has. You had faith. You're a survivor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we just appreciate you sharing. Yeah. Thank you. I know it was hard. I know it was hard. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you've been you. through a lot. Yeah. Thank you for having that candid conversation with us. Oh, thank you. You really did. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a candid minute. Okay. We all need encouragement. Mm -hmm. What kind of inspirational words would you can you leave with us today? What kind of inspirational word? An inspirational word. I think... I think what I would say is to whatever that thing is that's inside of you that you think you can't do because you're too old yes. or you're too young. This is me. Mm -hmm. You're too old. Mm -hmm. You're too fat. Mm -hmm. You're too this. Mm -hmm. You're too that. Oh, no, 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 no. All those things, the reason you can't. What if you really could? I think how I would answer that question is to... Whatever desire you have deep down inside of you, even the desire that maybe you don't want to share with your best friend mm -hmm. or your husband, your mm -hmm. partner, your whatever, whatever that deep, deep desire is mm -hmm. in your heart, put away all the fear, all the cannots that are in front of you. I'm too, these are mine. Mm -hmm. You're too old. You're too fat. You're too this. You're too that. Take away all the chatter and mm -hmm. silence yes, it. Yes. And, and treat yourself like you would treat somebody that you loved and that you saw as a cherished gift. Mm -hmm. How would you encourage the person you love the most? And encourage yourself. There you mm -hmm. go. And believe deep, deep in your heart that God gave you that desire. Yes. And you have everything inside of you to succeed, That's to right. do it. Mm -hmm. the, the candid moment, I think, would be don't be afraid to take one step. Yes. One step. 
one step. step. Exactly. And yeah. if you have a really hard day, it's okay to just sit down. Exactly. Yes. And if you have a hard week, just sit down. Mm -hmm. You know, you need a hog and dos, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sit down, mm -hmm. but then get up yes. and start again. And take one more step mm -hmm. and one more step. Yes. Yeah. And all of a well sudden, said. yeah. Love well it. Said. Love, love it. it. Love it. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> We want the viewers to get in contact with you. We want okay. them to purchase these books, awesome. the journal, the the coloring, the All kids the books. Stuff. Yes. yes. <laughs> we want them to purchase these books. How can they contact you? I think probably the best way to reach me is to go to adamadison.com. That's it. Yeah. Real Easy simple. Enough. A D A M A D I S O N. Dot com, yeah, and okay. you can contact me any way through there. Okay, awesome. and we'll post it as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So they have that. Awesome. Well, we wish yeah. you much success. Much Thank success. You. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. God bless you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. We thank you for welcoming us into your home this week. Please join us next Tuesday at 6 p.m. for another guest right here from our community. Ada shared her journey from terror to miraculous. She states no matter what she is going through, she looks up because she knows the Creator has it all in control. Ada has walked through the unimaginable and she is here to tell you don't stop and take one step at a time. Remember challenges are what makes life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. We are real sisters sharing real stories within our community. We thank you for tuning in. Let's talk about it. Candid Conversation Show. Yeah.